Physics with Mr. Brazil. Um, we're going to be looking at centripetal acceleration in a vertical circle with an angle inside. And this is part three of a three-part series, so the other two parts are linked below. If you want to see those, this is a tougher problem. So in this case, we're looking at a tether 10, 10 kilogram mass whirled at 8.5 meters per second with a radius of 4 meters. And we're looking at the angle 60 degrees below in the circle. It's the bottom of the vertical. What's the tension in the cord? Well, first of all, the tension and the centripetal acceleration are pointing upward. As for the force of gravity or the weight, it's downward. This is cool because the component force of gravity, I call it FGY in this case, is just opposite of the tension and pointing in the opposite direction. It makes a nice little triangle. With that, we can now know that since gravity is downward, the vertical is downward, theta is the, is the same for both above in the circle and below next to FGY and the weight, FG. Well, we can set up our equation because the whole system is pointing upward. And that means the force word is, the centripetal force, excuse me, is going upward. Well, our equation becomes pretty straightforward. I like to use FGY for the net force. Tension is positive, going upward. FGY is negative, because it's opposite of the tension. And since um, the centripetal force is upward also with T, it'll only be positive. So this will be a positive direction. Now, since this makes the triangle below FGY and the weight, FG, make a little triangle, we can, a right triangle actually, we can rewrite that. Since FG, remember, is always the hypotenuse for that triangle, therefore, FG times cosine is FGY. With that, we just put in our variables first, never put in numbers. We can factor out the mass, put in our values, put them in assuredly because I have students constantly forgetting to square the velocity. I don't know why they do that. And I've had students forgetting to put cosine 60. It's just they do. So variables first, plug in your equations, and then once you punch in the values into your calculator, sure enough, you're going to see that you have a 230 Newton force on that tension. And it kind of makes sense. As that object comes down to the bottom of that circle, the tension will increase because gravity is being added to that, and you got to give it a little more tug. Now let's look at something a little different. Now let's put a car whirling around inside that a pipe with the same diameter. In other words, we have a 10 kilogram car whirling around at 8.5 meters per second in the pipe with a radius of 4 meters. And we're looking at the angle of 35 degrees from the horizontal. What is the normal force? And we're also going to determine the friction force uh, in order to keep that car um, on that pipe upside down or semi-upside down. So let's take a look at that. First of all, the normal force that's being exerted from the pipe is pointing downward in the direction of a centripetal acceleration. Also, gravity drops straight down. Notice that also the component uh, FGY, the component force of gravity, is in the same direction as the normal. Therefore, the actual angle is between FGY and FG, or the weight. So to determine that, just subtract from 90, and you're going to see that theta is 55 degrees. So this theta is 55 degrees. With that, with that knowledge, you can now set up your system. Your system is pointing downward, so the centripetal acceleration is moving negatively. With that in mind, the equation becomes the net force in the y direction is minus the normal, minus FGY, minus the centripetal or uh, centripetal force, excuse me, centripetal force, okay? But the negative factors out, which is sweet because now everything is positive. Rearrange this equation. Oh, before rearranging, don't forget, don't forget FGY is equal to the weight 
times cosine. In this case, the theta is right next. It's adjacent to FGY. Therefore, the hypotenuse FG will be times cosine. Now, rearrange, pull out M like we did in the last problem, the mass, put our values. Okay, put our values. Now, if you need to, pause the video so you can see how everything goes, but do not forget to square the velocity and to multiply the angle. This all comes out to 124 newtons, which kind of makes sense because you have a little assistance from gravity on the upper end, so there's going to be a lot less force being exerted from the pipe than below because gravity would be pointing the opposite direction. In this case, there's a little gravitational assist. Now, let's look at friction. So we'll go to the next slide. And now friction will be right up here where the wheels are contacting in the cart. And since it's whirling uh, counterclockwise, the friction is going to go in the direction toward the right. With that in mind, we make a little triangle with FGY and the force, uh, gravitational weight, gravitational force. And friction will transpose between FGY and FG. Well, that is pretty straightforward. Sine will equal the friction force divided by the hypotenuse. Because theta is on this end, it's looking towards uh, the for a frictional force. With that in mind, we just rearrange, put mg, substitute our values in, always do that first, and we determine 80.3 newtons. And that kind of makes sense. That frictional force will be a little less than the normal force, which is supposed to be. And from there, we could also determine uh, the coefficient of friction if we want to. So I hope you find these helpful. Pause the video if you need to to review things. Um, enjoy physics. Keep practicing. Until next time.